Hey guys, I'm Phil. Welcome to Phil's Computer Lab and today we are going to overclock the world's first Intel Celeron running at 266 MHz. As most of you know, I'm not that keen on overclocking retro hardware. I like to look after these old parts and have them work for a very long time. However, I got so many comments about overclocking these Celeron CPUs. Your stories really resonated with me and reminds me of a forgotten era of overclocking that simply doesn't exist anymore. And that is buying one of the cheapest CPUs and turning it into something that can compete with the very best and most expensive processors that money could buy. These days we just get gimmicks like the anniversary edition of the Pentium which are meant to get us excited but are just a shadow of the true overclocking classics. Now unfortunately I totally missed out on all these slot 1 Celeron fun back in the day. But I totally get where you're coming from. Here's a forum post of mine from 2006 where I got a really cheap Sempron CPU running at 1.6 GHz. I volt modded the motherboard and had it running rock solid at 2.4 GHz almost matching the performance of the Athlon 64 Plus, a CPU that launched at a price of over 700 US dollars. So today we are taking this Celeron 266, a CPU that could be had for around $80 back in 1998 and we will overclock it and compare it against the much more expensive Pentium 2 CPUs from back in the day. I happen to have three of these Celeron 266 CPUs, but the very first one I tried turned out to be an absolute overclocking champion. Without having to touch the voltage at all, all I did was raise the front side bus from 66 to 100 MHz. The Celeron 266 has a 4x multiplier, so the clock frequency went from 266 to 400 MHz. The bus speed now runs at 100 MHz which helps out the Celeron heaps because it doesn't have any level 2 cache so any addition to the bus speed is greatly appreciated. The motherboard I'm using, the ABIT BH6, is a real overclocking classic. The CPU soft menu in the BIOS lets you raise the FSB just like that. Save the BIOS settings, restart the machine and there you have it, the Celeron running at 400 MHz. Let's dive straight into some DOS benchmarks in 3D Bench. The Celeron 266 wipes the floor with the competition. The same goes for Chris's 3D Bench. In PC Player Benchmark, it's just a tiny bit slower than the Pentium 2 333. And in Doom, it's miles ahead of the competition, 131 FPS. Same goes for Quake, 92 FPS, faster than all the other Pentium 2s. When we raise the resolution in PC Player Benchmark, it is just 1 FPS behind the top Pentium 2. In Quake, it is still the fastest CPU of 37 FPS, way in front of everything else. And the same goes for Duke Nukem 3D, we're getting 64 FPS. Let's have a look at some Windows benchmarks in 3D Mark 2000. It's not as fast as under DOS, but it is still able to keep up with the Pentium 2s. In incoming we are on the level of the Pentium 2 266 and Expandable seems to love the overclocked Celeron 38 FPS faster than all the other processors. In GL Quake we are close to the Pentium 2 266. In Quake 2 the overclocked Celeron performs very well faster than the Pentium 2 300. And Quake 2 running in software the Celeron once again takes the top spot. In Quake 3 the overclocked Celeron is just as fast as the Pentium 2 300. And our last benchmark MDK2 we are almost matching the Pentium 2 333. Let's look at power draw. The overclocked Celeron draws more power. In idle we are still drawing less than the Pentium 2 300. In gaming we've got Quake 2 running at 1024 by 768. 67 watts for the overclocked Celeron. And in expandable 1024 by 768 with VSync enabled, we're getting a power draw reading of 65 watts. Holy crap, guys! You weren't kidding when you told me to check out overclocking of the Celeron. I can just picture you back in 1998, reading in forums about the CPU, buying it, installing it into your machine, raising that front side bus, and then having a huge grin on your face. It's really sad that these days overclocking got sold out and seems to be the domain of expensive Core i5 and i7 CPUs. These days 
all of the cheap CPUs lack the cores and threads of the top processors and so overclocking on a budget is much more restrained. Looking at the performance of the overclocked Celeron 266, DOS performance is outstanding. In most benchmarks it smashes the Pentium 2 333. Under Windows the results vary. In games that ran well on the Celeron to begin with, overclocking to 400 MHz will give you performance ahead of the Pentium 2 333. In games that the Celeron struggled to begin with, it can now compete with the Pentium 2 266 or 300. Power draw has gone up slightly compared to the Pentium 2 333, which is on the same 250 nanometer process, but it is still far less compared to the Pentium 2 300 on the older 350 nanometer process. So there you have it guys, this has been an awesome project for me and I now understand why you guys commented so much about overclocking the Celeron. Back in the day, these chips were great for anyone gaming on a budget and wanted to get the most out of the purchase. These days, however, the price isn't really an issue and a fast Pentium 2 doesn't cost more than the Celerons. So I recommend getting a faster Pentium 2 or Pentium 3 because they cost just as much and they're really easy to get. But let's not forget the past and remember the good old days of overclocking a cheap CPU and sticking it to the large corporations. And that's it for this video guys. What do you feel about overclocking these days compared to the old days? Let me know down below. As always, please subscribe if you haven't done so before, share the video, hit the like or the dislike button and I will see you soon with another video.